In this video series, uh, I will be solving some sample problems on angular momentum uh, and uh, conservation of angular momentum. So I just picked uh, some random random problems. Uh, right, so the first problem is calculating the angular momentum uh, if uh, you are given the position and velocity vectors in uh, I, J, K unit vector notation. So for, for example, here's the question. At one instant, force uh, is applied in y direction uh, on a particle of mass, you know, uh, and its position vector is uh, given by this vector and velocity vector is given by this. So uh, about the origin and unit vector notation, what, what are the uh, object's angular momentum and the torque acting on the object? So first, let's calculate the angular momentum vector. So by definition, angular momentum, right, for any mass moving with some velocity v with respect to the reference point O is given by R cross P by definition. So R cross P is the linear momentum, which is mass times velocity vector. So mass is a, a you know, scalar quantity so you can just do r cross mass times r cross v and since you are given all these in ijk notations so you can simply put this in determinant form right so mass is 0 0.25 right and r cross v which is the cross product you can just calculate by using the determinant form as we discussed in the previous topic so then you need r cross v so first you you're going to need the components of the position vector and the position vector lies in i k plane okay it's a x z plane so its, it's component is 2 uh, 0 negative k uh, negative 2 and then the velocity vectors components is given by also in the same plane it's a x z plane so negative 5 it doesn't have y components is z component is plus 5 so that's it and then 0 0.25 <clears throat> and then you just do the cross product rule you know uh, so the first thing you have to do is cross out for calculating the x component right 0 minus 0 this minus that plus for x component you do this so for x for y component you do opposite so this negative 5 times negative 5 negative 2 is positive 10 minus 0 right and final plus the z component do the same thing so 0 minus 0 okay so basically it turns out 0 because everything is 0 so the angular momentum in this example in this particular example is just happened to be zero and its unit is uh, you know kilogram meter square per second why because angular momentum magnitude is rmv sine theta right so it's uh, meter m is mass kilogram uh, and it's meter per second so it's finally so unit standard unit is kilogram meter square per second okay that's the angular momentum for the first just happened to be zero because i just picked this problem randomly now second part uh you're given the force vector so force is applied in y direction your position vector uh, is 2i is from the given question right so what is the torque and do the same thing by definition torque is r cross f from our previous chapter you just do the cross product between position vector and the force vector you just have to put in unit vector notation like this like jk and first you have to put the components of the position vector which is 2 0 negative 2 and after that r cross f so f has only y component so 0 4 0 right and then you do the same thing 
so first finding the x component so 0 minus of minus 0 minus of uh, minus 8 positive 8 plus j for j you do this so you do opposite 0 minus 0 so 0 is 0 minus 0 plus k g for in g component you do so 8 this minus that so 8 minus 0 so that's going to be your torque vector okay from cross so torque is uh, in unit vector number. so 0 minus negative 8 is a positive 8 so positive 8 i in x direction this is 0 plus 8.0 in z direction so that's going to be your answer okay that's how you basically you can do the cross this is just an again um, exercise on calculating the cross product now one more example on angular momentum calculation really easy one so here's the example a two kilogram two kilogram rock has a uh, horizontal velocity of magnitude 12 meters per second in this direction uh, at point p uh, at this instant uh, what are the magnitude and direction of the angular momentum reference to this point so you are measuring the angular momentum of this rock flying horizontally uh, for, with respect to this reference point this is your reference reference point uh, and which makes an angle of 36.9 degree uh, with the position vector so this is your position vector r this is your velocity vector right and um, so by definition angular momentum vector is uh, just uh, you know r cross p again right so it's uh, magnitude this it's magnitude because it's acting to find the magnitude and direction magnitude is just uh, r m v sine of theta r phi so the position vector magnitude is 8 uh, mass is 2 kilogram velocity is 12 and sine of so it is making uh, this, this angle would be same right so this is the angle you need actually and it's happened to be the same actually because these are vertically opposite angle 36.9 degree and that's your answer magnitude so it 115 kilogram meter square per second that's the magnitude of the angular momentum vector of this rock flying horizontally with respect to this origin with respect to this reference point now what about the direction this is just the magnitude and to find the direction again use the cross product rule use the cross product rule just like in torque calculation which is right we call right hand rule so what you need to do is you have to point your fingers towards the position vector and you have to call your fingers towards the velocity or momentum uh, and then the thumb is your answer thumb is the angular momentum vector so it's in this case it's like this right it's negative z direction so it's into the page So the direction of the angular momentum is into the pace <clears throat> and if you consider this as positive g you know coming out of the pace at positive g and going into the pace is negative g so you can say negative g is the answer okay so that's how you calculate the uh, angular momentum both magnitude and direction so another good example of um, you know conservation of angular momentum is merry-go-round so for example if this person is standing uh, almost at the center of the merry-go-round initially so for example right and he has um, while he he's standing at the center of the merry-go-round his moment of inertia with respect to the uh, axis of rotation which is at the center is minimal is very small because he's right at the center he's he has almost no moment of inertia now let's see what what's going to happen to the spinning blade as he moves out to the edge of the merry-go-round as you can see the dramatic effect right the total systems um, rpm you know spinning rate has decreased significantly and the reason is 
because as soon as he moves uh, out to the edge of the merry round his moment of inertia is really big. Uh, so the total moment of inertia increases and automatically the angular velocity has to decrease because the product, the moment of inertia and the angular velocity should remain constant. As you increase I, uh, you, uh, the system will automatically slow down its uh, angular velocity, omega. So this is a good example of uh, another example of, you know, uh, conservation of uh, angular uh, moment. The next problem is on uh, conservation law, conservation of angular momentum. So, and based on the lecture slide that I have posted previously, uh, so here's the question. This is a rotating spinning disc, just like merry-go-round. A person, Bob, uh, initially is uh, standing at the, right at the center of this merry-go-round. And initially, you know, it's uh, spinning at this rate, 0 0.5 revolutions per second, which is equivalent to 30 revolutions per minute. So while it is rotating, Bob, Bob then walks out to the edge of the merry-go-round. 2 meters from the center, which is 2 meter is the radius of the merry-go-round disk. So what is the spinning rate now? So it's asking what's the uh, new spinning rate, you know. Uh, so here's the thing. So it has to do with the, since there is no external torque, nobody is actually applying any external torque. So that means uh, the, uh, uh, the net angular momentum of the whole system has to be equal so the, the sum vector sum of the angular momentum initial uh, must be equal to vector sum of the angular momentum final right uh, so that's the that's called conservation of angular momentum so that's what an angular momentum for a rigid object is the magnitude is i omega right uh, that's what we need to do so here initially while the bob is uh, so this is before this is after thing right uh, so even if this is this whole thing is um, uh, rotating spinning clockwise uh, since both are you know uh, both in, uh, before and after they are spinning at uh, uh, in, in clockwise direction so negative negative will cancel out eventually so you don't have to worry about the sign so first uh, i initial omega initial is equal to uh, i uh, final right omega final okay so now I'm gonna put all the formulas so I uh, so this is this is the sum you know so I initial since they are they must have the same angular momentum both because the Bob is just standing on the platform you know may go around so the both must have the same angular momentum you know, uh, here uh, and here. Uh, I mean, initially, you know, uh, so they must have same angle. For each case, they must have same angular momentum. So, but I, what I mean is, I, Bob, you know, omega initial, Bob, plus I, uh, you know, so I'm just going to call me go around as disk, omega uh, disk, right? That makes the total uh, angular momentum um, before, right? So, and this is a plus they are you're adding because they have the same direction. So, do the same thing. I bob final, right? Uh, be careful with the notation. Uh, omega final, right? plus i of disk uh, omega final because that's what and where we're solving for this so bob since it's standing at the center is zero it's moment of inertia is zero because moment of inertia bob you can just consider a, a point mass you know and point mass has moment of inertia m r square. Since the bob is standing uh, just at the center of the merry-go-round, is uh, initial moment of inertia is zero. So we just consider this approximation. You know, we just consider bob as a point mass for simplicity. Unless it says, 
plus the disk initial these are all initial okay so the disk has moment of inertia of a disk is just mr square mass of the disk so radius of the disk right times uh, initial omega which is given right uh, and bob now when bobs walks out to the edge of the merry-go-round and we consider bob as a point mass is just mass of the bob and radius is the same as the radius of the merry-go-round because it walks out to the edge uh, and omega final right plus disk is the moment of inertia of the disk hasn't changed the mass of the disk radius square omega final and we're solving for omega final right so let's put all the numbers so mass of the disk is 200 uh, the radius is 2 meters square omega initial uh, so omega initial which is the angle of velocity 0.5 revolutions per second so you have to change into our standard uh, here in this case actually they will cancel out it doesn't really matter but uh, it's good to put in standard unit standard unit is radians per second remember one revolution has two pi so two pi radians so two pi then this unit is radians per second so 0 0.5 times you have to multiply by two pi to convert into radians per and the right hand side now mass of bob bob is 36 kilogram uh, and uh, plus mass of disc is 200 because radius square is and omega final are common factor so radius is uh, two meters and omega final you are solving for the omega final so omega final is uh, going to be you know <coughs> uh so let me calculate that so 2.26 is in radians per second right and if you want to change into rpm just to compare practically rpm uh, so it's going to be 2.26 so revolutions first divide by 2 pi all uh, right to convert into uh, radians to represent 2 pi and you have to multiply by 60 so i'm just converting into rpm so this is this is going to be in revolutions per minute and this is uh, 22 rpm if you do that so you can clearly see it slows down because initially it was uh, rotating and spinning at 30 revolutions per minute when Bob was at the center but when he walks out to the edge uh, its revolutions per minute has decreased right and it's not surprised because when the Bob walks out to the edge the the moment of inertia of the whole system uh, decreases so that's why the angular velocity has to increase because of this is the direct consequences of you know conservation of angular momentum so the next problem is also uh, a conservation of angular momentum but it's called rotational collision so here's the question um, there are two disc solid disc so it says uh, uh, stationary disc this is the second disc you know stationary disc is just dropped onto a rotating disc you know this is spinning at omega initial initial omega so it's acting and then after dropping this onto the bigger one they move together uh, it's acting what's the calculate the resulting angular speed in terms of omega so this is all solving you know uh, in terms of omega so we are going to find the final omega common they move together they spin together after collision so this is also called rotational this type of problem is also called rotational collision which we could easily do and test in our lab uh, so here's the again so uh, since we assume that there's no external torque acting on the system 
So during the collision, they uh, exert equal and opposite torque. They, uh, those are called internal torque, and they will cancel out from Newton's third law. Uh, but there's, since there's no external torque, the angular momentum has to be conserved, just like before. So that's our main equation. So you have two objects. So I1 omega 1 initial plus I2 uh, omega 2 initial, right? And uh, final same thing. I1 omega 1 final plus I2 omega 2 final, right? But these are same, common. Why? Because after collision they spin, spin together. So let's do that. Let's put so I1. Uh, so this is all in terms of symbols. So I1 is it says I1 has a moment of inertia of 2 times I. So you have to put 2 times I, right? Omega initial. So initially, this bottom uh, disc uh, was rotating at omega angular speed plus I2, uh, which is this. Right, it's drop from rest, so this has zero angular momentum because it is drop from rest. So finally, here after collision, they spin together, uh, so their angular velocity must be same. So I1 uh, <coughs> plus I2 times omega final. So then 2i omega is I1 is twice i plus i2 is i over 2 that's given and omega final that's it and let's simplify that 2 i omega is this is uh, for uh, 5 i over 2 and omega final so i cancel out so 4 over 5 right is 4 over 5 omega so that's the angular velocity of the system after collision. So this is all in terms of <coughs> symbols. So this problem is pretty similar to the, the animation, the GIF animation I just showed you. And this is again a direct consequences and very interesting consequences of conservation of angular momentum. So here it's, and this also lab, this interesting lab actually we could easily do in the lab. Uh, so here's the thing, this uh, student uh, holds a spinning wheel, uh, bicycle wheel, right, uh, he's, and he's not spinning initially, he's just holding this spinning, it's spinning in counterclockwise direction, uh, uh, which is the bicycle wheel initially is spinning at 3.9 revolutions per second, he, he's just holding. Now the next is, next, it says, while, uh, what happened, what happened to the, uh, you know, what would be his uh, spinning rate as soon as he flips the bicycle wheel? So as soon as he flips the bicycle wheel, what's going to happen to his body? So, and these are the given quantities, given variables. So as the question, main question is, what is his angular speed once he inverts the wheel in opposite direction? And this is also again in terms of you know so the, uh, you can uh, study actually you can show the vector nature of angular uh, momentum here. So what's going to happen is as you inverts right as you flips the wheel by 180 degree um, since initially so first I'm going to first show you this vector nature of the angular. So all the, the total angular momentum you have in the system is just the wheels, the bicycle wheels angular. This is the total angular, angular momentum of the system. And that will not change. We know that since there's no external torque. This should remain. We know the answer. We know the answer. The final angular momentum of the whole system has to be constant, has to be same. And because of that, to do this, then this person, this student's uh, body has to, you know, uh, spin automatically, right? As you can see in the JF animation previously, uh, it will rotate so that 
the sum of this angular momentum this is this is the wheel's angular momentum right after he inverts it so the sum of this two right must be equal to the initial the sum of this the vector sum of these two angular momentum has to be equal to the total initial angular momentum right because we know that the total angular momentum initial and final must be equal conservation so that's what you need to do here so <clears throat> so again let's start with like, the calculation part is this same the vector sum of the angular momentum has to be equal right before uh, and after he inverts uh, the bicycle wheel so initially um, the body is not rotating so you have the angular momentum uh, only i of the bicycle wheel and times omega initial right is equal to once he inverts it so you have now two angular momentum one is angular momentum of the body the student body omega uh, final which we're going to calculate we don't know that uh, and right and negative because the angular momentum angular momentum of the bicycle will once he inverts it is negative now in negative g direction because now it's it's um, spinning in clockwise direction as he inverts it so make sure you don't forget this negative sign i of the bicycle wheel right times uh, omega final its magnitude is same same as before when you inverse the direction and you're solving the final angular velocity of uh, the student right and that's it so i body omega final is i bicycle omega initial plus i bicycle omega final right and then we are solving this so i bicycle omega initial plus i bicycle omega final divided by the uh, i body and let's put all the numbers so the bicycle has <coughs> a moment of inertia 1.2 and omega initial wheel has uh, 3.9 it's in revolutions per minute per second so that's why you have to multiply by 2 pi plus the same thing 1.2 its magnitude is same right because he just inverts it its magnitude is same divided by the body has moment of inertia 6.8 that's given so that's the final angular velocity once you invert it and you can calculate that and from calculation you can see just gonna quickly do that 8.64 8.6 so we have converted this into radians per second so this in radians per second so that should be your answer okay and you can clearly see right the angular velocity now you can check the magnitude so that's your answer so this is the angular velocity of this student body student so here's the next interesting problem so here's the meter stick uh, and it's lying on a frictionless table this is the top view you know and it says a body hits the meter stick you know at 50 degree angle and after collision it says they stick the body stick together on the meter stick and they move together and it's asking what's the final uh, angular speed right after the collision immediately after the body has stuck it what is the angular velocity of the measure stick uh, so again we have to do the same thing so body stuck at, at it says the body uh, has hit 
uh, at this is now this is the position vector you say right where it hits uh, the meter stick at uh, two third of L. So L since it's a meter stick, right? It's a meter stick. Is its length is one meter exactly. So again, so we're doing the same concept actually. It's the, again you have to use the physical concept, same physical concept, conservation of angular momentum, right? Because it's a collision problem. So do the same thing. L i is L final, right? And so L initial, uh, so the meter stick is at rest initially, right? The meter stick is not spinning. So all the uh, angular momentum is actually coming from the body, body's angular momentum. So this is the initial is body, body angular momentum. And Finally, they stick together and then they spin together. So finally, uh, it's a I party omega, right? This is the moment of inertia about this pivot point. Uh, final plus I of the stick, middle stick, about this point. The point of pivot point is at the end of the stick, omega final. Again, they are same. This omega final is same because they move together, they stick together. Okay, so your I body is just consider as a point mass. Body is just as a point mass. So just consider as a point mass. And we know from our definition, right? Um, for a point mass, the angular momentum is R cross P. And its magnitude is MRV sine theta because P is mass times velocity. So you just need to do uh, R M V sine of, uh, so it makes 50 degree angle here, right? And its direction is actually, you just, this is the position vector and it hits here. So it's, it's like from right hand rule, you do, do this, right? So its direction is positive, positive Z positive z direction from right angle you just call your fingers like this this is this is the momentum vector right going is up out of the pace it's out of the pace positive z direction so here i party so body is so after collision is stuck here at two third of the distance so it's moment of inertia uh, for, for a point mass is just um, this mr square right where R is two third, two third of L, L is one meter, and omega final uh, is uh, you know uh, is same for both. So I stick. So this is important. So this is the moment of inertia for a stick. And stick you can consider a stick as a thin rod, you know, thin rod. And from our moment of inertia calculation, if you pivot a thin rod at one end, right? If this is the pivot point, right? This moment of inertia from parallel axis theorem you can prove is one third m l square. Okay, that's the moment of inertia about one end of the rod. So one third of m mass of the stick length is one, and this common is because we can factor out the omega final, right? And now you can put all the numbers. So radius, uh, this this is the position vector magnitude, and the body hits here. What two third of L? L is one meter, so two third. Mass of the body is zero point five five kilogram. So initially it was traveling at twelve meters per second. That's all given, right? And then do the same thing on the right hand side. Mass of the body zero point five five. Uh, it hits us two third, so whole square plus like one third mass of the. Uh, I'm sorry, sorry, made a mistake here. Body has one point zero one two. That's just read the question, and meter stick has. Uh, body has zero point one two kilogram, and meter stick has zero point five five kilogram. Okay, one third m. 
yellow yellow square yellow yellow is one square and this whole thing times the omega final square and that's what we're calculating so we're calculating the final angular speed of the meter stick and that once you do this calculation 3.11 radians per second in standard unit remember. not re revolutions per second because we have put everything in standard unit so your final answer should be in standard unit which is radians per second So this example is uh, on uh, uh, rotational collision. It's called rotational collision. So let me show you this animation. So a ball hits the hanging bar, and then after collision, they say the ball or the body stick together, and then uh, they swing out together, and then it just becomes a ballistic pendulum. And then you can use uh, both uh, conservation of angular momentum and conservation of energy in two separate cases so for example um, during the collision you will have to use uh, conservation of angular momentum and uh, right after collision as they swing out together um, then uh, you can use conservation of energy because the only force acting on the system is force of gravity so here's one more question so now instead of um, you know, lying this bar on a horizontal table is hanging vertically initially. And so this metal bar, two meter long metal bar, is weighing 90 newtons, is uh, hanging vertically at rest initially. It says um, a ball suddenly, right, uh, strikes uh, this bar at 1.5 meters. So this position vector. So the 1.5 meter right and it says the ball then rebounds the ball then rebounds after striking after collision rebounds back in the same uh, opposite direction uh, so it was it hits with 10 meter per second but it rebounds with 6 meter per second All right and it's action was the final angular speed but before that, actually, it, it wants you to answer this uh, conceptual question. So during this collision, which statement is true? Okay. So both angular momentum and the energy of the system are conjunct, which is not true. Because during the collision, the energy will be lost, right? The huge energy will be lost. The mechanical energy will not be conjunct. So this is definitely not true. Angular momentum is conjunct, but uh, energy is not conjunct. And that is correct. So this is the correct answer because during the collision angular momentum is conserved right uh, because there's no external torque but energy is not conserved so next is energy is conserved but angular momentum is not conserved that's not true both angular momentum and energy are not conserved. that's also not true okay so the next the numerical uh, problem after that find the angular speed of the bar metal bar just right after the collision and you have to do the same thing so L I is L F, right? And remember, um, energy doesn't conserve because of collision, and but angular momentum does conserve. So this here, uh, before collision, right? Uh, all the angular momentum is carried out, carried by this ball, the striking ball, right? So that's uh, <clears throat> so again, R M. Uh, v initial sign so it strikes at 90 degree so that's the angular momentum magnitude of the striking ball right and um, initially the bar has no angular momentum because it's just uh, at rest it's just it's just hanging vertically at rest but however after collision both uh, the ball and mm, the bar has angular momentum and this is positive because from our cross product rule, from our right hand rule, this is like this, right? So this is your R, this is your position vector where it strikes, this is your R, and this is your this is your velocity, this is your momentum, this is your P. So R cross P, right, is out of the pace. So it's positive, it's in positive G direction. But 
uh, after it rebounds it has, if this is positive angular momentum when it rebounds it has to be negative angular momentum so it start rebounds at the same r is same mass is same but final velocity is different plus uh, the angular flow angular momentum of the uh, bar which is this i of the bar omega final of the bar and this is what we are calculating okay first let me first simplify r m v initial of the ball sine 90 is 1 plus r m v final and this is also sine 90 degree when it rebounds is equal to i of the bar again the, this metal bar is hinged or pivoted at one end so then its moment of inertia is uh, one third ml square from our previous chapter and omega final is what we are cal cal calculating right and so let me do it here so omega final is r m v initial plus r m v final divided by one third okay so now you can put all the numerical values so r is if the ball structure 1.5 meter below so 1.5 mass of the ball is 3 kilogram it was moving at 10 meters per second initially 1.5 3 uh, it rebounds with 6 meters per second divided by one third mass of the bar is okay mass of the bar is not directly given mass of the weight of the bar is given 90 newtons but weight is mass times gravity mass is 90 newtons divided by 9.8 so mass of the bar is 9.2 kilogram so you have to do one more step so 9.2 the length of the bar is 2 meters that's given so and then do this calculation and you will see that it it will be uh, 5.9 about 5.9 radians per second in standard range. so that's how you can that's how you <coughs> calculate okay. just the regular conservation law you know, this is a very important universal law okay the next part part C so now after collision as suppose all right so now this is a um, different scenario after the collision if the body stick together stick to the bar and swing out together which statement is true suppose instead of rebound right rebounding it's, uh, suppose the body got stuck on the bar and they swing out together which statement is true both angular momentum and energy of the system are conserved which is not true angular momentum is conserved but energy is not conserved because it's not true because force of gravity now when they swing out um, the force of gravity is acting so angular momentum is not conserved Energy is conserved, but angular momentum is not conserved, and this is true. So this is the right answer now for the second part, uh, because energy is conserved because force of gravity. The only force acting on the system is force of gravity, and which is conservative force. But angular momentum doesn't conserve because since external f force or external torque is acting as a gravity gravitational torque, uh, angular momentum doesn't conserve. So that's the right answer, and this is also not true.